Hey y'all, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be Unit 2D, the Establishment Clause in the Public Square. I think we have four cases. These are all some pretty big cases, um, and especially the last one from 2019. So we'll talk about all these. Um, the first case is Allegheny County versus Pittsburgh U uh, ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. Um, and the vote was six to three, and it's a weird one because they uh, strike down some of the lower court ruling, but affirm some of the lower court ruling. Um, and Justice Blackman delivers the majority opinion. So the context here is that Pittsburgh, the city of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania, has two different sort of um, holiday displays. They have one at the county courthouse that is what they call a creche or sort of the, the manger scene, right? Um, with the wise men and Jesus and Mary and uh, et cetera um, in a manger. And um, it is put on by like the, the local Catholic council. And then um, sort of just down the street is the city county building. And they have um, sort of um, all inclusive religious um, sort of Christmas holiday thing, right? They've got a big uh, Christmas tree, and they say something about, you know, um, celebrate liberty, and it's got a menorah from, from um, Jewish tradition, um, you know, a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, and so the lower court basically said, okay, well, both of them are unconstitutional uh, via the Establishment Clause, right? But the Supreme Court says, no, not really. Um the Christmas one is clearly unconstitutional, right? It's it's sort of clearly religious. It doesn't really pass the first standard of the Kurt, of the lemon test. Um, you know, it, it's not secular. Um, it's given sort of pride of place at the county courthouse, um, and it's all sort of the religious iconography of Christmas, not the secular iconography of Christmas, right? So it's got to go. But the menorah is okay, right? Because it's not just about the Jewish holiday. The menorah also takes on sort of a secular winter spirit. It's also included with a Christmas tree and all this stuff about liberty and elections and blah, blah, blah. And so they say the menorah is fine, right? It's this, it's sort of a secular, um, all-inclusive display. So it's fine. All right. Case two, McCreary County versus the ACLU of Kentucky. Excuse me. It's a five to four affirmation of the lower court ruling, and Justice Souter delivers the majority opinion. So, in two courthouses in Kentucky, there are giant uh, Ten Commandments, basically. Um, and the ACLU, again, the American Civil Liberties Union, challenges and has um, wants them taken down. Um, and so Kentucky sort of goes back to the drawing board and does all these changes and sort of wraps the Ten Commandments around some historical documents about law, right? Um, and so Kentucky shows up to the Supreme Court and says that first, the court shouldn't even consider the first piece of the lemon test, right? Is it secular or is it religious? Because the courts don't really have the right to make that decision. Um, and second, that we can't use the legislative history, but rather just the newest attempt. Sorry about that. There's a helicopter going right over my house. It's very loud. Okay, so the second argument that Kentucky makes is that we can't use sort of the all-inclusive legislative history, and we have to just look at the most recent attempt to sort of secularize the Ten Commandments. And the court basically says, you know, they call bullshit on both of them. They're like, okay, first, both of these arguments are silly and anti-historical. We've been doing this for a very long time. But they're also both kind of intellectually offensive, right? How dare you say we're too stupid to be able to go back and understand the context of the original legislative text? So um, they strike that one down. They say, you got to remove the Ten Commandments. Okay. Uh, case three, Van Orden versus Perry. Uh, so this is a Texas decision. Um, this is a five to four affirmation of the lower court ruling. And Justice Rehnquist delivers the plurality decision. So um, 
basically the the context here is that um, Texas around the state capitol has like twenty to thirty statues, and one of the one of them, excuse me, um, is the Ten Commandments, and um, all of the statues are supposed to be sort of um, significant additions to the history or the lore or the law or the government of Texas, right? And so they claim that, you know, the Ten Commandments are the basis for a lot of our laws. And the lower courts um, say, you know what, that's okay. Um, and so the court rules basically that, you know, while the Ten Commandments are clearly religious, um, and we've declared that before, as in with that, like, Kentucky law we just talked about, it's more contextual than that, right? Um, you're not trying to sort of force every single child in the state to look at the Ten Commandments on the wall, and you're not trying to force every attendee to the courthouse to look at big crosses or the Ten Commandments on the wall, right? This is something that's a lot more passive in their language, that um, it's not as aggressive as the other laws, right? You're not trying to force people to look at it. This is where um, it's included with many other monuments as, as sort of a contextual history of Texas, and it's made public to visit, right? You don't have to come and see it. You're not being forced to see it. And so the courts declare that it does pass constitutional muster. All right, case four, the American Legion versus the American Humanist Association. Uh, it's a very recent case in 2019. Uh, and this is a big one. So this is the first time that they tried to clarify some of the lemon test, right? And this is a seven to two reversal of the lower court ruling and Justice Alito delivers the majority opinion. So the context here, um, there was a huge cross erected in 1925, and um, man, I don't even remember what state. I guess it doesn't matter. This little local community in 1925 erected this big cross, this big white cross, um, as a tribute to the soldiers who died in World War One. And 90 years later, it was challenged um, by the American Humanist Association as being um, a violation of the Establishment Clause um, because it's on public land and because public money is used for its maintenance. Uh, and the lower courts ruled that the court, that the, that the cross has to be removed um, because of the Establishment Clause. But the Supreme Court disagrees and they say, um, the cross not only represents Christ, um, but also the loss of the hundreds of thousands of American soldiers who died, who, um, unlike in wars before, where they received sort of, um, you know, stone tombstones after World War I, so many people died um, that they put in sort of cheap white um, crosses or stars of David. Um, and so in a lot of the photos at the time, um, a lot of people were struck by just the thousands and thousands of crosses um, across the cemeteries in the United States, representing all of these, these past soldiers. Um, and so it took on a different non-religious tone, according to the judges. Um, and its removal after nearly a century would be seen by many not as a neutral act by the court, but as the manifestation of a hostility toward religion that has no place in our Establishment Clause traditions, is the quote. So they go on and say the Lemon Test has become problematic, right? It's been 50 or 60 years, and there are some complicated cases wherein the Lemon Test just doesn't really seem to fit anymore, and we need to look at things in a new way. So they offer this these four really problematic cases, um, wherein cases that involve the use for ceremony, celebratory, or commemorative purposes of words or symbols with religious associations, right? So we know that some symbology of religion and some sort of the words that are used by religious uh, people um, can also take on secular meaning, right? Like the Christmas tree. Um, and things of that sort, or the menorah for many, um, at least American Jews who are sort of Jews 
um, in their religion, but not really practicing or not literal um, with their sort of Torah. Um, and so, you know, some of this stuff can take on very secular um, viewpoints or ideology or symbology. And they say there's really four times when this is problematic for the Lemon case. The first, and these are all quotes, and I'm sorry, but I wanted to get the sort of the wording right. The first is, cases often concern monuments, symbols, or practices that were first established long ago. And in such cases, identifying their original purpose or purposes may be especially difficult. So this is the problem with the first part of the lemon test, right? Trying to establish um, the intent, was it secular or religious? And this is part of what Kentucky was arguing in their other case, where the courts were like, no, BS. But, um, you know, the problem of intent becomes more and more difficult the farther back into history you go. Okay, the second problem. As time goes by, the purposes associated with an established monument, symbol, or practice often multiply, right? And so they can take on multiple meanings. Um, the third, just as the purpose for maintaining a monument, symbol, or practice may evolve, the message conveyed may change over time. And then fourth, when time's passage imbues a religiously expressive monument, symbol, or practice with this kind of familiarity and historical significance, removing it may no longer appear neutral, especially for the local community for which it has taken on particular meaning. A government that roams the land, tearing down monuments with religious symbolism and scrubbing away any reference to the divine will strike many as aggressively hostile to religion. So they're saying, look, we can't just go around tearing all this stuff down, right? This stuff is meaningful in people's lives. It has a hundred years of historical significance. It's taken on both religious and secular um, symbology, and it would be remiss of us to go around tearing these things down and making us uh, lo look like sort of the destroyers of religion, right? Um, and so it, it's an interesting four points to sort of philosophically contemplate, and the, the, the courts will certainly be visiting them more in the future to clarify some of this stuff. All right, that's the end of this one. Uh, have a great day. I'll see you for the next one, which is prayer at government meetings.